When you're working with MySQL, it's helpful to have a good tool to work with it. And I think that MySQL Workbench is really nice to use. So this video will go over how to install it. And then I will also show how to create a connection and things like that. So to find this, you would go to mysql.com products workbench. And right now this is what the screen shows. They, you know, change over time, but this is what I'm seeing. So I'm going to go ahead and click on download now. Okay. So on this page, it brings us to the version that it's most current. I have Windows, so I'll be downloading that. Now it's recommending a download here. It's got this MySQL installer for Windows, but notice it says all MySQL products for all Windows platforms in one package. And I don't need all MySQL products. I'm just looking for Workbench. So I'm going to go down here to other downloads and notice here it just has that as the installer. So I'm going to go down here to download. Now it also is saying, hey, sign up for an Oracle account, blah, blah, blah. But you can go to no thanks, just start my download. Okay, so once that is downloaded, I'm going to go here to run that installer. So we've got a setup wizard for Workbench. And then I will click Next. I can choose where I'd like it to go. Um, I'm just going to have it go to my C drive in the default location. And for me, I'm just going to go ahead with the complete features. And that's fine because I'm only installing Workbench. And I can click Install. Those are completed. I'm, notice I have launched my SQL Workbench here. I'm going to click Finish. Now that Workbench is open, you'll need a MySQL connection to use it. Here it says it could not detect any MySQL server running, and that's fine because I'm going to be using a remote server, one that I have WebSpace purchased at. So I'll show you where you need to put the things, but obviously I'm not going to show you more my uh, login information. So to create a new connection, under MySQL Connections, we click a plus, and this is where you'll put your information. So the connection name can be anything really. So um, I'm just going to put example connection because that is fine. Here is where you'll put your host name. So if you have a, you know, a .com or something, wherever you're publishing to, you'll put that there. You'll enter your database username there. Sometimes that's different than your regular FTP username. The default schema is whatever database you would like it to default login to. So you would put your database name there. So this is your username for login, the database you're connecting to, and then the password you can store in Vault. So if I clicked here, I can go ahead and type in the password there. So um, let me enter my information here and I can test my connection. Now, for mine, the server I'm on has a higher version. And according to this, it says that MySQL Workbench was only developed up to server connections up to really eight. I'm going to continue anyway because it should be working just fine anyway. So there I am. I successfully created my connection. It will show you your connection information on this window, but I've blocked mine out. I'm going to go ahead and say OK and close this by saying OK. And if you notice, now it has a box, example connection. And in that box, it will show you your a little bit of a connection information, what the URL is, what your username is. But once again, I've blocked that out. Now, once that's there, I can go ahead and click and it should open up my SQL Workbench. Once again, it'll give a little warning if it's a different version, but it should be fine. I'm going to click on don't show this message again. And the first time you're in, there are some things here that you may not actually need. This navigator with management, you probably don't need this for some basic database stuff. So I'm just going to go over to this schema tab instead. And what this will do is show you 
your tables. It's got your database name there. Once again, I have that blocked out, but then your tables inside are in here. And if you had some, it would let you open it. And so there are also some panels here. Um, you can control the view of those panels. There's these little boxes up here to show or hide them. So notice I can show or hide that, the bottom one, and then this side one. So usually I hide the side one. I'll usually leave this one open. This is where I can type queries. Down below it shows some output like, yes, it worked. And then you can get started working with databases. So that's all I'm going to show for now for setting up and logging into MySQL Workbench. As far as creating tables, that will be a different video.